Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of the Brighton career mode and today we've got a little bit of a different type of episode. We're going to start off playing against Burnley but the remaining fixtures we have are not really too interesting fixtures at home against Aston Villa and then away against Newcastle. So what we're going to do is we're going to sim those but we're going to have a look through the squad and have a little play around and think about the positions that we think or I think we need to strengthen in and it'd be great to get your feedback in the comments as to the positions or even players you think we should buy to help us going into the next season so let's uh let's jump into this first game against burnley they are same points as us and a point place above us in the league so it should be a very tight game but i'm hoping we can come out on top and get three points last time out at the amex we gave uh, brighton fans not necessarily the right result they wanted but we gave them the performance that they wanted uh, in a very tightly test contested game against chelsea so hopefully this time around we can give them the result they'll all want to be seeing which is a victory for the Seagulls because we haven't really had too many victories uh, at home this season. So we could pro probably reward the fans as way of trying to get in oh, early on. Powered it up a little bit too much going for the near post. No, no, early on. Looks like they've signed a new striker. I think his name is Onachu, but a typical Burnley fashion, a huge... He, he looks absolutely a massive compared to Leandro Trossard there, but he gets it into Chris Wood, who's got himself 11 goals this season. So it's not too shabby from his perspective. That's a decent return. Uh, and we saw in the last game, or we didn't see, but we heard in the last game, that Burnley did beat Liverpool 4-3. So that, that kind of idea of Burnley not being able to score maybe has become a bit of a myth in this career mode save at least. And uh, they can definitely score. So we're going to have to keep our wits about us defensively. What? What? How How has Chris Wood scored that? What, what kind of next level Chris Wood is this? How did he squeeze that part? Look at that. You can see the empty seats in the Amex. Even the Brighton fans don't want to come. Look at how has he scored from here. How on earth has he scored from there? What the hell is Robert Sanchez doing getting beaten there? All right, this is probably the best angle we're going to get. He dived past the ball. What are you doing? You just got to stand still and put your hands up. How are we 2-0 down in 14 minutes? We get a corner here trying to salvage something back in this first half. It's a good header. Ah, oh, it's tipped over by the... Nick Pope. We need to get something back here in the first half. We we can't go into halftime 2-0 down. That would just be terrible. Oh, the halftime whistle goes. Oh, and it's 2-0 down. How? How? We, we can barely score one goal, let alone two goals. You know what? You know who maybe hasn't impressed me as much in the Premier League? Timothy Weyer. He's been doing pretty good in the FA Cup whilst we were still in that competition. He got four goals in the two games or three games he played in that competition. But in the Premier League, Against Premier League defences, he maybe hasn't been as good as I want or need him to be. Oh, that's a dirty foul. And it's a red card for the big man, Onuachu. That was a terrible tackle. Just came in from behind there on Witzel. That was completely uncalled for. What is he doing? What is he doing? As we were just talking about how we're going to find a way to get back into this game. But playing against 10 men is going to help big time. Come on! Come on! Get in there. Mark Cucurella with a fantastic run. We were talking about Timothy Weyer at the beginning of this half. How he maybe hasn't had the impact in the Premier League. But we get one back. It was a nice run from Cucurella from deep. And it was a nice ball into Mope. And Weyer's just chilling there in the middle of the box all on his own. And he was able to slot it away. Come on, 2-1. Let's keep it going. No, no, they haven't done that on the break. How has that, how has that happened? Oh, it's a second sending off. It's a second sending off. That came from absolutely nowhere. Uh, Phil Bardsley with his second yellow card. And they're down to nine men. They are down to nine men. Surely we can score two goals here. And Wepu finished that. Come on! He finishes it with five minutes to go. And they're down to nine men. Alright, we've got to go all out attack here. We might even be able to win the game. Oh, Lamptey's through here. Square the ball. No! Ah! Uh. 
That's a foul. Oh no, we've gone into extra time now. The time very much is running out and the ball has been given to Alexis McAllister to uh, try and finish this. Come on, concentrate. Oh no! And it was Witzel who ended up taking it. He went to the side of the goalkeeper. Oh no! They went down to nine men. Have you ever seen a game in career mode go down to nine men? I feel like every game has been such a seesaw recently. A couple of defeats and it looks like we're looking down rather than up now. As you can see there, we're just a point ahead of Everton and Palace. Uh, a couple of point, a couple clear of Watford. You know, I don't think we have to worry about them. But again, a couple of defeats and we could easily be mixing it with Watford. But we kind of lost touch now with obviously Burnley going three points ahead of us and Leeds United as well, which is a bit of a shame. But next up, we've got Aston Villa, which we're going to sim. So we're going to have a look to see maybe... We can get a surprise result. You never know. Surprise result. What do we say? A 3-0 victory. Who was it? Trossard, Weyer, and uh, I don't know. Who else scored? Who else scored? Cucurella. Cucurella getting three goals. Cucurella coming in with a 9.0 rating. Timothy Weyer with a 9.5. Against a team, remember, Aston Villa that are fourth in the league in this save. So they are definitely not a shabby team. So it looks like we've... The players have got it in them to win. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the problem. So we're going to sim once again for the Newcastle game. And we get another victory. Come on. This is what you love to see. Back to back sim victories. Witzel and Cucurella again. Looks like Cucurella has been on a bit of a madness um, in these sim games. 8.1 rating. Everyone doesn't seem to have been playing as well as they did in that last game. But nevertheless, we get a three points. So those back-to-back -back victories could rescue it a little bit after that shaky game against Burnley. That's exactly what we needed. And as you can see there, it does make a big difference. We move into 12th place. We have played a game more than Leeds, so they could leapfrog us. But we've got, again, started looking back up the table rather than down the table um, with those back-to-back -back victories. But now let's have a look at the team and let's have a look and think about where we might take this team going forward. Now, we've been playing the five back pretty much since I came in or since Graham Potter left it last season and I think possibly I don't really think we're good enough defensively to move away from the back five so I think we will be we will be sticking with a back five we brought in Nat Phillips and we got Lewis Dunk and Webster but I do think bringing in a top quality center back probably to replace maybe Webster um, or even Nat Phillips and have Nat Phillips as another option is gonna be a must for us going into next season I just think that yeah, we've just been pretty poor defensively. And if you look at, like, all of the games we've lost, like that Burnley one, for example, defensively, we're just not solid enough. Uh, Cucurella on the left and Lamptey on the right, I've been very, very impressed with. So those two will definitely be staying, as will Robert Sanchez in goal, who, uh, barring that Watford error that he made in the last episode has been very, very solid for us. And I'll be interesting to see him develop over the next season. And then we've got Witzel who will start for us just because we brought him in and he's a player that I want to pin some hopes on uh, alongside Yves Bissouma in that central midfield position. So this is, I'd say, pretty much solid. But up front is where things change a little bit. So Trossard, he's done okay, but... I feel like we can maybe do with some better competition in this position. We've got Lalana who hasn't really played too much. McAllister, who's terrible. And I feel like we just maybe need something maybe a little bit different in that position. Maybe a box-to-box -box midfielder, maybe. And make it three central midfielders rather than kind of two CDMs and one uh, cam. Because I feel like Trossard just doesn't get enough support up top. And then he's not too much of a help backwards either. So he's kind of in a weird position. So we might look to tweak the formation just a little bit. And then we've got Weyer, who we signed this season, who, who we've thrown thrusted into the first team but actually might need a little bit more time as a backup striker I think to kind of get into this team so maybe we, I think we're going to have to go out and buy yet another striker in the summer uh, to play I think alongside Neil Mope however should a good deal come in for Neil Mope I don't think I'd be too sad about letting him go. He's okay, but like his pace isn't so good. His finishing's decent, but I feel like if we put, if we brought in one or possibly two really good strikers, they could make a very, very big difference to the team. But the subs and the reserves, I think, is where I want to make most of the changes. So Danny Welbeck, again, a pretty old player. Maybe we have him in reserve just if we need him, if we get a couple of injuries. Lalana, again, a player maybe we keep just for a rainy day. McAllister needs to go. Mwepu, 
is an interesting one. I haven't really played him too much, but I'd be interested to see whether maybe next season he could challenge Bissouma and Witzel. At the moment, he's still a backup. Maybe he will remain a backup. Um, but then we've got Pascal Gross in that position as well. Someone who I, I might move on just because, I don't know, he doesn't really work well with my play style. Dan Byrne again, another centre back that maybe we can play a little bit, but might just be good for backup. And then we've got players like Sonny March, who again, we might keep as a backup. Players like Alzate, Veltman, I think might go. And then we'll keep some of these young players. Uh, Connolly is definitely going. Duffy is probably going to be going as well as well as Modest. So I feel like some of these these subs and players that haven't have kind of stuck around but I haven't really had the confidence in playing at all for any extended period of time this season I think we can get rid of and maybe try and use some of the money we get in to get in from those players to bolster our squad. But yeah, let me know what you guys think else we can do with this team. Do you think do you agree? Do you think we should stick to a back five? Uh, I have no idea. I haven't thought about from a striker position who we might actually buy. I have no idea or even in the kind of um, central midfield position. So leave comments down below as to who you think we should buy. I've seen Daniel Marlin in the comments below. So if he's not available, if he's available for like not stupid money, maybe he's someone we look at. But, you know, we're not going to have the biggest budget with Brighton as well, remember? So we might need to sell the likes of Mope um, and maybe Pascal Gross to bring in some money to bring those uh, players into the club but i'm gonna leave this episode at that uh, we've got some very juicy games coming actually in the next episode i think we've got liverpool yes we've got liverpool and manchester city two games which we we did pretty well in earlier in the season so i'll be interested to see how we do against them uh one at the amex and then the man city game away the etihad and then we've got norwich who i think are floundering down the bottom of the table and then we're really going into the home stretch uh arsenal spurs uh, Southampton, then Wolves, and then United, Leeds, and West Ham to finish off the season. So we're only going to have a couple more episodes now until it is the end of this season one in the career mode. I've been enjoying this team. It's been a bit up and down, up and down. Definitely it's been a lot more downs, I think, than ups though. But things more recently have been looking up, which is good. And I think if we bring in a couple of fresh faces, some players to, you know, like rejuvenate the club a little bit and keep things exciting, I think that will be huge going into season two. But I hope you guys enjoyed this slightly different episode. We obviously got two wins and that very interesting weird game with nine with nine players against Burnley. So uh, yeah, make sure to subscribe if you're looking forward to the remaining episodes and if you enjoyed this one. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.